Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be learning how to do addition the best way possible uh, without a calculator, all in our minds, and how to do it uh, the best way possible. And sort of, uh, firstly, I'll break down sort of what goes on in our mind and how we can sort of get good at it. So I'll go through some uh, uh, a fair few examples just to try and illustrate what I, uh, you know, this method that I sort of um, use and I think uh, will help you out and to be able to do additions really quickly and something that, uh, you know, um, voids the fact that you um, uh, need to use, uh, need a calculator at all. So basically, you know, any numbers, you know, in the hundreds, couple of hundreds to a thousand, this is probably one of the best ways, unless you've got like a ridiculous number of decimal points, then this method wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use so. Um, so firstly, uh, when we are looking at, say, for example, a number like uh, 7 plus 8, um, I want you guys to understand that what really goes on in our mind is um, that the 7, we want to break, we, we actually break it down into numbers um, easier to, for us to, to sort of um, add. So 5 plus 2 is 7, okay, and then 8 is 5 plus 3. So when we're looking at this, when we add 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3, it becomes a whole lot easier because 5 plus 5 is 10, 2 plus 3 is 5, and obviously 10 plus 5 is 15. So it becomes a whole lot easier to sort of visualize and understand and uh, be able to break numbers down like this to be able to sort of um, do it quickly in our, in our head. And obviously the more you do this, the easier it will become. Um, what about, uh, you know, say if we looked at uh, 14 plus uh, 20, uh, 27? Actually, I won't write it like this. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll write it this way. So, for, you know, you're asked, uh, what is 14 plus 27? And what you want to do is that uh, with this method is you, you want to try and get to the nearest 10 or the nearest 100. Even the nearest five we can help you, but usually the nearest 10 or the nearest 100 is the best way to go about it. So um, you look at both this number, for example, this one, which is closer to the nearest 10. This is six away from 20, while this is only three away from 30. So I'd focus on this number first. So I add three to this, and that obviously becomes 30. 27 plus three is 30. And then I look at the second number, uh, what I've done here on this side is I've added 3. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to deduct 3 from this side. So 14 minus 3 becomes 11. And now 11 plus 30 is a whole lot easier than looking at 14 and 27. Therefore, 30 plus 11 becomes uh, 41. And that is our number. So that's the basic idea. So hopefully by illustrating with these easier examples, um, you can apply it to bigger and bigger numbers. And uh, yeah, we might as well go through another example. Say 68 plus uh, 39. Um, you know, what does that equal? And I guess the easiest way you could do it is, you can do it both ways. You can either go, I guess you can either go, I'll add one to this side to make, to make it 40. So this becomes 40. And because I've added one on this side, I simply deduct one from this side, which becomes 67. And 67 plus 40 is a whole lot easier. And it's something that you can reasonably add quickly in your mind, because what you then sort of focus on is that 60 is 60 plus seven, and then obviously plus 40. You then add the 60 plus 40, which equals 100, plus the seven, which becomes 107. Whoa. Okay, so hopefully that that's making sense. Um, and again, let's let's do some more examples so that we can truly understand this with the bigger numbers. Let's go uh, 158 um, plus uh, let's say a four. Okay, so we're looking at these two numbers again individually. What is easier? Is it easier to sort of try and get this to the nearest um, hundred, or is it easier to get this to the nearest hundred? Uh, 
from my perspective, I guess, the, I mean, we can do it both ways. From my perspective, 84 is closer to 100 than 58 is. So um, what I'll do is I'll actually go, let's add, what, what do we need in order to get to 100? So we've got four here, we need a six to get to 90, and another 10 to get to 100, so 16. I've added 16 on this side, I have to deduct 16 from this side, okay? So 16 minus 58. And the way you sort of want to look at this is that, um, you know, you want to focus on the numbers individually in your mind. You sort of go, okay, I've got 58 and I've got 16. Uh, uh, what is uh, 8 minus 6? 8 minus 6 is uh, 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. And obviously just bring down the 1. We're left with 142 plus 100 on this side because... Remember, so 84 plus 16 was, uh, uh, you know, we're trying to get to 100. Now, this becomes a, a whole lot better um, and easier to add in our mind. So then we just add the hundreds together. It gives us 242, which becomes, becomes 242. Okay, so another example. Let's try an even bigger number. Uh, for example, 356 plus 899. Okay, what's, uh, obviously, you look at the numbers again, and I'm sorry to reiterate, but I just want to um, show you that you can go both, way, both ways. You can either go, okay, I'm going to see what do I need to get to 400, and then go ahead and add that way, but try and make it easier for yourself, um, as easy as possible. For me, the 899 looks like the easy target, so all, all I need is a 1, and I've got my 900. I've added one, it's easy to take one from this side, simply minus one from this side, it gives, gives me 355, and now you're pretty much done, you're literally done. Um, but when it comes to 355, just focus on the 300, so you break it down into 300 plus 55 plus 900, then you simply go 900 plus 300 is 1200, okay, so 1200, and then plus 55, oops plus 55 and guess what you're left with is 1255 it's as simple as that but the whole point of this sort of segment is that you can do this in your mind and the more you practice the easier it'll become okay and the other neat thing about this trick is that it'll actually help you in in, in all parts of um, your life say for example you were selling a product or um, you had something on for sale that was um, $34.65 and the customer or whoever pays you with a $50 note. So what do you do? You simply add up to the nearest dollar first. Okay, I've got $0.65. Cents. I want to get to the nearest dollar. If I add, so what I do is I pick up a $0.05 cent piece and I note it down. That gets me to $0.70, okay? So 65 we added five cents and that gets me to 70 cents okay and then what are 70 cents plus another 30 cents and then you ask yourself okay from here once i've gotten to the nearest 10 it's easy um so then you get uh, plus uh, 30 cents well, i've written it backwards but you guys get it plus 30 cents gets me to my one dollar so this now becomes um this now becomes uh, $35, so $35, I want to get to 50 plus another $5, gives me to 40, so now I have 40 plus another $10, I guess I'll put a dollar sign there as well, gets me to my 50. Okay, so then what you change and uh, what what you change ends up being is actually just ten plus five plus five cents. Oh, not five cents. Sorry, I forgot the thirty is the thirty cents down here, plus the thirty cents. Okay, so thirty five cents. So it would be fifteen dollars and uh, thirty five cents. This is the exact change that you'll be giving the customer back. And this is all without a calculator. So it's about adding up to the nearest dollar and then to the nearest 10 and then to whatever the customer pays you with. Now, I probably didn't explain that in the most 
clearest form. So what I'll do is I'll just go through one more example. Say you had uh, something that was worth 42 and um, 85 cents, okay? Just a little bit more clearer. Hopefully um, this makes sense. Say the customer pays with a $100 bill. So how do I get to my $100 bill? So that's what you're sort of accounting up to. Okay, you're gonna take the 42, you wanna count up to because the amount that you count up to get to the 100 is the amount the customer you have to give the, the customer or whoever back as change. So $42.85, to get to the nearest 10 cents or, or to 90 cents, you have to add five cents. So I'm gonna write, okay, so we've got uh, five cents, which gets me to 90. I'm gonna pick that out of the till and then now I'm not up to 90 cents um, to get to the nearest dollar, I'm gonna need another 10 cents. So I pick up a, a, a 10 cent piece, oops. So I pick up a 10 cent piece. And then now I've gotten to $42, uh, I've gotten to $43. So now that I'm up to $43, what, what do I need? Um, to get to forty-five dollars, I'm going to need a two-dollar coin. So I pick up a two-dollar coin. Now I'm at forty-five, and then what do I need to get to fifty? Uh, obviously, pick up a five-dollar note, and now I'm up to fifty. Okay, and now how do I get to a hundred? Simply pick up a fifty-dollar note, and you're up to a hundred. And the th these pieces of uh, the five-cent piece, the ten-cent piece, the two, the five and um, the $50 note, this your, this ends up being the, the total change that you owe the customer or whoever is paying you with that $100 bill for this product that's $42.85. So if that makes sense, so you just simply add this up. You don't even have to you just hand it over to the customer because that's how much it's due. But you can, you say, okay, 50 plus five is $50, 57, so $57 and 15 cents, okay? $57.15 and this, this knowing how to add up to the nearest dollar, then to the nearest five and then to the nearest 10 and then to the nearest hundred will take you a long way. This is the kind of thing that you don't need a calculator with and I urge you guys to practice because this is how you're supposed to be adding. And if it did help you out, make sure to help me out by subscribing, hitting that like button, leave me a question or a comment down below and um, I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.